Hello, today we are interviewing Dr. Upendranath Singh, Associate Director for Census Systems, Engineering Directorate at NASA Langley Research Center. Dr. Upendranath Singh, welcome and thanks for being with us today. Thank you. It's an, really an honor to come here at Ecole Polytechnic. You came today to give a conference, which is part of the Coriolis Institute cycle on energy and environment, to prepare the Paris Climate Conference 2015 or COP21. How can NASA contribute to a better understanding of climate change? See, one of the goal of NASA is to understand and protect the Earth planet Earth is a planet. And the key things that what we try to do is to understand the health of the atmosphere, that what's going on in the atmosphere. And the understanding and the knowledge of each and every constituents that how they are distributed and what effect they have. For example, you might have heard about the ozone, for example, mm -hmm. that ozone hole was created. Right now you are hearing a lot of things about global warming. So we try to understand that what is the scientific, developing the scientific understanding that what is causing the ozone hole, for example, how to remedy that particular hole. Similarly, with the global warming, we try to see that what is causing this global warming or what is causing the increase in the CO2. So we try to understand the source and sinks of this CO2. Um, and by knowing that, we can work with the modelers with this experimental data and we can have a better prediction that what's going to happen in next 10 to 15 years or 20 years long term. Mm -hmm. The topic of your conference was more precisely on NASA, NASA's future vision for Earth science missions for global observations. Right. What are the new techniques and technologies currently developed to improve those observations? One of the NASA or a lot of space agencies measurement from Earth observation were based on the passive remote sensing technologies. It is a great technology, very robust technologies, very mature technologies. It gives you a complete uh, coverage like SWAT, thousands of kilometers kind of coverage that which you can get. And th this has been very powerful. But what we are finding that these technologies can work only when there is a sun. When there is no sun in the night time, these cannot work. So what we are trying to, the new technology that which are coming is called LIDAR. LIDAR is a light detection and ranging. It's just like a radar. It's analogous to radar. And just like in a radar part, you send a radio waves, it hits a, some object and comes back and it tells you where it is. LIDAR, which is a 10, 10 to the power six orders of magnitude frequency wise, when it looks a molecule, it looks like a plane. So when you send the LIDAR beam, it reflect, gets reflected from the molecule or dust particles and it brings the information. And basically you can look at the vertical profiling that how from zero kilometers to 50 kilometer, 30 kilometer, how these constituents are you know, varying. And that vertical profiling is a very key thing for understanding the, the source and sinks of a lot of molecules. You know. And so this new technology that which is coming, LiDAR, active optical remote sensing, uh, it is going to help or supplement the passive remote sensing technology. It is not a comp competing but complementing way. Together, they will give us much more better picture of the atmosphere. And applying uh, those new techniques for global societal benefit sounds very appealing. Mm, are there any challenges associated to doing so though? See, NASA or any other organization, we are paid by the taxpayer money. Our boss is the taxpayer, they are our stakeholder. So whatever we do, it has to be connected to their life or there that one of the objective NASA has that how can you make how, how can we make your life better how can we make the earth a better place to live and uh, with that goes that if there are things that which we can do to make your life better we would like to do that 
So give you M1 example, wind is a key measurement, we weather forecasting, that we want to understand that how is this hurricane or big, uh, when the hurricane comes, can we predict it long term that which area it is going to go through? We can save a lot of lives. We can save, do a lot of savings if we can predict that what is the path mm -hmm. of the hurricane. The challenge is to measuring wind actively from the space. So for example, NASA and ESA, and they are all interested in using the LIDAR to make the wind measurement from space. So for example, the weather forecasting right now, for example, that which you do it two days in advance, you could be doing the weather forecasting seven days in advance, 10 days in advance, and that will have a lot of benefit in societal benefits because the farmers will know that what's going on or the, you can save the lives. So that's the one, one particular societal benefit. Similarly, the tsunami, volcano eruption. So these, these kind of uh, event which is happening in the real time, you can, you can measure those things and you can predict those things in a much better accuracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you once said that scientists uh, do not have boundaries. And uh, I think that a lot of uh, several scientific international organizations have asked you to join their board. According to you, what can Ecole Polytechnique or other institutions like, like LEAKS uh, can do to foster international scientific dialogue? Very interesting. Um, I think, uh, yes, I always believed that just like atmosphere doesn't have a boundary, we atmospheric scientists should not have a boundary. I left my country, I'm, I'm from India, I left my country in 1982 came to Ecole Polytechnic and did my PhD with Ecole Polytechnic and University of, Mar University of Pierre and Marie Curie 6. That's where I got my PhD. I lived here for five years. I was totally French. I speak, I learned how to speak French. I wrote my thesis in French. And now I live in the United States from last 30 years. What, what I learned from these places that I had a passion for seeking the knowledge and that passion for seeking the knowledge has driven me to different places. Everywhere I have gone, I have learned. I have learned things. Um, and I've worked with people of a different culture or different nationality. And that's the richness of diversity that I believe in. Coming back to the Ecole Polytechnic, you have some of the best students, the brightest, brightest student here in now in Nicole Polytechnic. They have a very young mind. They are very eager to use their knowledge and their expertise to contribute towards this space. I had a very good meeting, lunchtime meeting. Your president came. And when the students, I talked to them, their eyes were just like, just twinkling, just like glowing, just like I had that fire in my belly. And I can relate to that because one day I was just like them, you know. So what I'm looking for that they are working on the, they are planning to work on nano satellite, a small satellite, but the new technique and technologies. NASA is also very much interested in the, in, the, in the small sat or nanotechnologies. We are trying to go and see that is there any common ground that these young brains can come and help us and we can help in their career and it's mutually beneficial for them as well as for the NASA. So that's why I'm here to foster a relationship between NASA and between these young kids, and then think about it that how we can take it to the international level, how we can bring the other space agencies, and how Ecole Polytechnic Polytechnique, with the knowledge and the talent they have, how can they can contribute in their way to solve and to help us better understand the Earth and better understand that how can better make the, the life on this Earth planet. So you you mentioned the fact that you were an Ecole Polytechnique alumnus. Yes. Uh, looking back, do you think that it was a good decision to go to the US? You know, I tell you the truth. First, I was so much attached here because French, France gave me quite a lot. I didn't want it to go. But my advisor and everybody that who were my well-wisher, they suggested that United States is the place to go. 
That's where, that doesn't have any limit and that has all those unlimited resources. And if you, you can pursue whatever the dream you have. And I must go there for one or two years. If I don't like, I can always come back. So when I went there, I tell you, I had a, I had a ticket. You know, they gave me a ticket that any time I feel like I can return. I still have the ticket. Uh, but it's, it, it's, 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 it's a fantastic, the opportunity. The NASA gave me, the University of Maryland gave me, and the environment and the empowerment they gave me, I'm very much thankful. And I'm still working with France, so I've never left France. Um, I still have a lot of friends, a lot of relationship, and a lot of e collaboration with, with, with France. And so I have never left. I'm a part of Ecole Polytechnic. I will never be other than that, but I have expanded my horizon from India, IIT Kanpur, to Ecole Polytechnic, and now NASA. We are all, all just like a family. You know, we're all doing this our job. What advice would you give to Ecole Polytechnic students, and especially PhD students, who see you as a role model and who would like to follow you and join NASA? Um, my advice to them is that go wherever your passion takes you. Do not limit yourself from the place where you fell on the ground and grew Sometimes it's better to go away from the trees from which you came from. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying that, that a scientist is seeking the knowledge. His, his, his main job is to seek knowledge. And you have to the, go to the source of that knowledge. In my case, in my case, own case, I had to go to the United States because I found that the possibilities were limitless and the opportunities and the resources were limitless. And I'm very thankful for NASA that gave me, my, gave me the empowerment to do and follow my passion, that which, which I, I really wanted to do. And similar thing for the Ecole Polytechnic guys. They are very bright students, and they should pursue distant lands that where they can do things which they always dreamed about it and envisioned about it. And wherever it takes them, they should go and just follow these things. It's, it's a wonderful journey. Don't look for destination because life is it about the journey, not about destination. Dr. Upendra Singh, thank you very much. Thank you.